Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting functional equation. We have f of negative x equals 1 over f of x for values that are appropriate for this because you don't want f of x to be 0. And we're looking for a function f of x that satisfies this equation. Can we use guess and check? How many solutions are there? These are all good questions. So we're going to go through those. I'm also going to show you a result from Wolfram Alpha. But result doesn't necessarily mean we have a solution. Do you think Wolfram Alpha can handle this problem? Most of the time, it can't handle functional equations. They're too hard for a large language model. Or some people call it a calculator. Anyways. By the way, speaking of calculators, do you think there is a calculator that can solve functional equations? I kind of looked for one, but I couldn't really find it. Maybe if one day somebody writes a functional equation calculator, I think they'll be very rich. Anyways, so let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, if f of x is not zero, and it can't be zero, obviously, I'd like to multiply both sides by that. So I can look at this equation this way which is, I think, a little better. f of negative x times f of x is equal to 1. Of course, f of x cannot be 0. f of negative x cannot be 0 either, right? So at this point, I'm thinking something that takes x as an input and takes negative x, its opposite as an input, they're reciprocals. How is that possible? That kind of reminds us exponential functions, doesn't it? So maybe f of x can be something like 2 to the power x, or even f of x can be e to the power x, which is the best exponential function because e is Euler's number. What about something like 1 over x or just x? Do you think f of x equals x would work? You can easily find out that's not going to work. What about trigonometric functions, sine and cosine? By the way, when I said, can we guess and check? There are way too many options, right? It can be inverse hyperbolic something who knows and but a couple things that i want to explore first of all i noticed that these two work in general an exponential exponential function will work because if f of x is e to the x then you realize this is e to the negative x times e to the x which is e to the power zero and that's always equal to one so that's good the base doesn't matter here so exponential function is a solution great but how do we get there? We'll talk about that. Another thing I want to explore is, can f be rational? In other words, can f of x be written as ax plus b over cx plus d? By the way, these are not the only rational functions. In general, if p and q are polynomials, then p of x divided by q of x is considered a rational function. Okay? So 1 over x plus 2 is also a rational function. Do you think that'll work? 1 over x didn't work. This probably is not going to work either. But who knows? Maybe 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 2 will work. How do you test it out? You can always plug it in. That's the thing. You just come up with a conjecture and then test it out. So in this case, I'd like to test this. What is f of negative x? It'll be a times negative x, which is negative ax plus b, divided by c of neg c times negative x, which is negative c of x plus d. Now we want the product of these two things to be one. So in other words, ax plus b over cx plus d times negative ax plus b over negative cx plus d equals one. Is that possible at all? Now, multiplying this might seem like a difficult task, but don't worry, by using difference of two squares, in other words, we can write this as follows, b plus ax over d plus cx, and then here b minus ax over d minus cx equals one. That's nice. Now we can go ahead and multiply these. That's gonna give us b squared minus a squared x squared from difference of two squares, which is a very common formula, by the way. You should definitely know that. And the denominators will give us d squared minus c squared x squared. And we want this to be 1. Obviously, you don't want d squared minus c squared x squared to be 0. 
So you gotta be careful about that. But under those conditions, we can safely say that, okay, d squared, oops, minus c squared x squared is equal to b squared minus a squared x squared. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you can interpret this in so many different ways. For example, you can bring the b squared over, put this on the right hand side, put this on the left, so it'll become like this. And then you can factor out x squared and write this as c squared minus a squared as the coefficient of x squared. Well, what is that supposed to mean? We have too many variables. Well, think about it. This equation must be true for all x values, except for the values that make the denominator zero. So that means we have a variable on the right hand side and a constant on the left hand side. How is that possible? A variable equals a constant? Well, it can be if the variable is not a variable. What does that mean? It means the coefficient of the variable is zero. So the only way to make it work is by setting the coefficient of the variable, the coefficient of x squared equal to zero. But that also means this is equal to zero. So this gives us a system of equations. d squared equals b squared and c squared equals a squared. This is the power of math. This is the power of algebra. From a single equation, you can get many equations, okay? So from here, we get two solutions, d equals b or d equals negative b. From here we get two solutions, c equals a or c equals negative a. So we can kind of look at the different combinations like one, two, three, four, if you call these equations one, two, three, four, or maybe it's probably better to use letters for these like a and b. So you can kind of think about one a or one b or two a or two b. There are four options, two times two, right? By counting. So we can take a look at those options. For example, what happens if we go with 1 and a, right? That would give us the following. Because d is b, I can basically replace d with b and c with a. So that'll be like ax plus b divided by x plus b, which is 1. Uh-oh, if f of x is equal to 1, a constant function, this will work, obviously. Well, what was I thinking? Because if f of x is always 1, then f of negative x is also 1. 1 times 1 equals 1. We're all good, right? This is really, I mean, this is not the most impressive solution, but at least we have one solution besides the exponentials, right? So we have another solution. Good, good. So f of x equals 1 works. But what about taking something slightly different, like maybe 1 and b, right? Let's take 1 and b. So f of x is supposed to be ax plus b over cx plus d, which it can be written as, by the way, we're going to do 1, which is d with b. So it's going to be like ax plus b, and this is going to be a b. But c will be replaced with negative a, so it's going to be negative ax plus b. Now pay attention to the second solution that I found, this one, because you'll see, okay? So let me go ahead and show you. Oh, by the way, before we get into the solution for a move from alpha, is there one? You can test it out. I want to show you my approach. So this is actually not guess and check. It's actually a really cool way to do it. Let's go ahead and take a look. So this was what I wanted to share, but I also wanted to give you a little background and some trial and error. I hope you don't mind. Some people like, oh, this is too long, can be done in two minutes. That's not the goal. The goal is just to talk about different variations, possibilities, so on and so forth. Anyways, so here's what I'd like to do. I want to assume that f of x, since exponentials worked, I want to assume that f of x can be written as e to the power of g of x, where g of x is just another function of x, right? So if you plug it in from here, f of negative x should be e to the power g of negative x. Great. Now let's go ahead and plug it in, and we can use the, the product version which we had, right, after cross multiplication. So this one times f of x, which is e to the power of g of x, equals one. Now we know that we can add the exponents, which is really cool. So we can kind of write it like this. And one can be written as e to the power zero, which means g to the power negative x plus g to the power x is equal to zero. And you know what that means? 
this is awesome because this means g of negative x is equal to negative g of x and that means g is an odd function so g is odd like sine of x or x or negative x or negative x cubed awesome so this means if you pick f to be something like this where g is an odd function then you have a solution in other words f of x equals e to the x is a solution because x is an odd function or it could be e to the x cubed it could even be e to the power x cubed plus x x it could even be like this is crazy e to the power sine of x and you can keep adding odd functions to this as long as you keep it odd you are good to go isn't that awesome i think this is amazing now let's go ahead and check out the result from wolfram alpha because i think you'll be surprised what if wolfram alpha says wolfram alpha doesn't understand your query too bad we're gonna dismiss class okay let's go ahead and take a look ready set and go Ta -da -da -da. yes this time wolfram alpha really surprised me because it was able to find the solution and guess what this is a rational function go ahead and compare this to our findings and this brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and you can suggest problems just make a comment and also check out my other channel which is a plus bi and bye bye